Hi to my friends and welcome into this week's episode of Forte Catholic. I'm so glad that you are here to join me and our good friend, Father Anthony Sharapa, as we do two things that I think we do the best around here. One, I have a hot take about the mass that Father Anthony helps me sort through. And then two, we play a very silly game that is brand new, scripture-based, and I think it might be the best game we've ever played. So I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. If you do, make sure you hit subscribe wherever you are watching or listening. Have fun. Hello there, and welcome to Forte Catholic. I am Taylor Schroll, and that is a priest. Hello, priest. Hello, layperson. It's nice to see you. Um, have you gotten a chance to listen to the episode that I recorded with my kids yet? Yeah, yeah. I thought both of you daughters, daughters uh, your only two children, did a great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have three They're children. Very cute. Yeah. You do? I, I, I have created and owned three children, yes. Huh. I thought you only had... To, oh, wait. You did have a son. <laughs> yeah. He's dead to me now. <laughs> He's dead to me. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> you know why. He knows why. Who are your, who's your favorite priest? Oh, I'll name two, neither of which is Father Anthony. Give it me was, a break. I like I didn't like I didn't even pl- I, I couldn't have dreamt of that moment. I could I couldn't have planned it any better. I I mean cuz I, I I didn't plan it and it was just this beautiful moment and he just picked two priests that uh, you know, uh, he's like Brick Tamblin from Anchorman. He's just picking the yep. priest uh, next to him, and he forgot about you. And I think it's very funny. Yeah, I still think you're probably his favorite priest. Your your fa- his yep. You are probably his mm-hmm. favorite priest. You're just more forgettable than the other two. Oh, is that it? Okay, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure the other two priests have played video games with him. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, sure, fine. No, no, that's cool. That's cool. Very funny. So I, I enjoyed the episode. I wasn't sure if you got a chance, but it was one of the greatest clips we've ever clipped. <laughs> of the, <year> of the, <laughs> <laughs> the little YouTube short was really good. <laughs> it really was. All right. Well, then other than being roasted by my 11 year old, uh, we're going to start off doing the state of the Sharapa because uh, I have called you and texted you multiple times and you just haven't responded, which is usually Ooh. a great sign for how things are going for you. So uh, what's what's Ooh. going on in the world of Sharapa? The good, the bad, the ugly how's it going buddy uh yeah it's busy uh we started up ocia uh, a couple weeks ago um we've got a lot of people we got like 14 people in class and then a lot of them have brought like uh spouses and stuff and they're great they're super cool so and i really enjoy i love teaching the classes and answering questions and uh so that's great so I, I, I've never asked you this about OCIA. I, it sounded yeah. like you were moving on. I want to stay here for just a moment. Yeah, sure. In my, you have told me multiple times and here on the show that you teach the OCI, OCIA classes. So I think it's very cool because I think not many priests do that for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times it's because like, oh, I'm the pastor or whatever. But you being the associate pastor, maybe you have a little bit uh, extra time or something that you're passionate mm-hmm. about. You get, to, you get to kind of pick and choose a little bit more as the associate pastor than... I'm the pastor and everyone needs my attention. That's just my assumption. But you leading OCIA, I've never thought about this. Is it you by yourself? Like, are you doing big group discussion and you're like leading a discussion? You're doing a big group like talk or whatever, catechesis, and then doing Mm -hmm. big group discussion. Is there a team? Do other people give talks? Do other people help out? Uh, I, I never thought this deeply about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, the lady who's in charge of all our faith formation, she's there. Uh, she's more administration. If if I can't make it to a class, she'll take over. We we use a um, a video series called Symbolon. And so uh, so we use that. And I kind of fill in the blanks and add some stuff to that, answer questions about that. Um, we do kind of a a quick Bible study on the upcoming gospel do different uh, little snippets of the mass each class as well. Uh, so it's basically we do Bible stuff, what's going on uh, this week in the church as far as like feast days or stuff like that. We jump into the video series, answer questions, that sort of thing, um, and then talk a little bit about one little tiny part of the mass is usually how the class goes. So it's, it's not too bad. Yeah. Have you ever heard of two roses and a thorn? Have you heard of this? Yes. It's like So... Typically, it's like, how's your week been, youth? (laughs) Give me two roses and a thorn. Two good things and two bad, or one bad thing. I have two roses and a thorn about your OCIA class. Yeah. 
two roses. I think it's very cool. They're, they're, the two roses are similar but different enough. I think it's very cool that you are introducing them to the church calendar now. I, I, I don't think I've ever heard of that in an OCIA or RCA calendar. A lot of times it is like teach to the right is kind of the big thing that everybody talks about. It's like, I need you to understand the things like when the bishop or priest or whatever asks you, do you believe X, Y, and Z of the Catholic Church? You have to be like, I have to understand this to say yes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like that part because it's not, most of OCIA and RCA is informational, right? It's catechetical. But I like the, like, hey, this is what the life of a Catholic looks like. So you mentioned the, uh, the, the feast days and then also the mass. It's like, you know, if you're a, Catholic, you're a Catholic, being a part of the mass is a big part of what it's going to look like. So I like that. The thorn, I am, I am personally mad at you because I, I misunderstood OCIA in multiple ways. I didn't realize yeah. uh, that it had this other depth. I also didn't realize that you were copping out and not teaching these. I'm I'm not a fan of video series when there's a better speaker in the room. What are you doing? You lazy bum. <laughs> uh, so the first year, the first year, I just straight up taught it. I, See, like, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, that's a lot of work. So <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Yes, the, the, it's a lot yeah. of work in year one. Do yeah. it again. You already have the notes. <laughs> it's, oh, I'm it's not a cool. no, 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 no. I'm not a note guy. That makes oh, me feel too much like homework. I kind of, I know. <laughs> Uh, so yeah. you so you didn't want to do homework, so you stopped doing any work at all and sat them in front of a video series. Now, I'm not opposed to Symbolon. I think it's a great thing for, like, you know, enhancing your own faith, watching it on TV at home or whatever. But yeah. doing it when Father Anthony Sharapa, the, one of the top 38 homilists in the U.S., come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? That's fair. That's fair. Um, though, like, the first year we did the Symbolon series, I was like, oh, my gosh. Because there's a suggestion from um, our – so basically I took over RCA because our re re religious director kind of quit in the middle of the year. So I taught the rest of that year. I think I taught a little bit after that. But then when we got our new lady, she was like, oh, hey, have you heard of Symbol? I'm like, actually, it's real good because I had experience with it while I was in seminary teaching or being a part of uh, RCIA. Anyway, the point is it's way easier. And uh, I fill in the blanks, and yeah, I, I, you, I mean, you try to make me feel guilty about this. It's not going to work. I'm, I, I'm, I don't care. I'm disappointed in you, <laughs> Father. That's usually, fine. usually that statement goes from father to child. This is going from yeah. layperson to father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were no, doing no, no. it right. That's what drives me nuts. Is you were doing it correctly, and you're like, nah, no more work for me. <laughs> don't worry, I still talk plenty during class. But uh, yeah, no, 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 it's it's great. So we started up that. I went to the gym today for the first time in like a month. Wow! I have become super weak. You know what? What kind of prompted it is one I've been like just busy, anxious, stressed. Everything's been all goofy like that. So I haven't gone to the gym. Um, one of the pressures was like, "Hey, have you lost weight?" And I was like, "Yeah," because I haven't like been eating food in like a month. <laughs> So I was like, let's get back to the gym, get my appetite back up, become like a healthy person again. So started up that. So that was good. I'm hungry. Let's yeah. go to the gym. I like that thought process. No, no, no. See, I'm not hungry. I'm so used to just <laughs> sustaining myself via caffeine. Once I start going to the gym, I get my appetite back up and I become like a uh, more motivated to eat food. You and I yes. have the opposite problem. <laughs> I eat oh, yeah. too much food, so that I, therefore I have to go to the gym. <laughs> mm -hmm. You no, go to the totally, gym yeah. in order mm -hmm. to want to eat. We are we couldn't be more opposite. You yeah, like showing videos. I like talking. You like weight lifting weights. I like eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Uh, and then the the final uh, two big things are: last week was our parish. Uh, we celebrated our parish feast day. Uh, we were St. Michael the Archangel Parish, so uh, the feast was, of course, um, the Archangels, and we moved that feast day to the Sunday and did it up real nice. And then we're ending our 40 hours devotion, which we started that Sunday as well, with a big old Eucharistic procession. Uh, one of our auxiliary bishops is showing up, so I have to do that tonight and yeah, walk around and pray a rosary and they'll be Jesus and it'll be nice. So, or you could just yeah. play a video of someone praying the rosary. <laughs> I mean, I'd be okay with that. I this is this is something that like I I, think, I don't know if I said on this show. I don't like group rosaries. It's not my jam. You, you've it's, said it. You, you've so said nuts. it a few times, but I don't mind you saying I, it, it again. That hasn't changed. Like yeah, when everyone's like, let's all play. Like let's not. You can do that by yourself. I I I just I cannot pray when when that's going on. It's just me saying words. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure it counts on some level, 
But for me and my personal devotion, but that's the thing about being a priest. Sometimes you do do things that aren't your personal devotion. Other times you just play videos. So it, it, it's a wash. It evens out. I like that you brought it up. Like you were like, have we discussed this before? And literally what you said is you're going to pray a rosary during a Eucharistic procession. And you have yeah. been very publicly about not liking public rosaries. And I have been very public about how I can't pray during Eucharistic processions. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to the Taylor and Anthony uh, worst way to pray this evening. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Also, there's a bishop there, which will probably stress you out, which also isn't conducive to prayer. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I, I know what we're doing is a good thing. Will it be personally beneficial to me? No, no, it won't be. But for the parish and for the people going there, I'm sure it will be. And that's, that's great. See, the, see what, you, how you are seeing tonight is the opposite of how you're looking at RCAA. You're looking, mm -hmm. you are making the self-sacrifice tonight. You're like, this isn't really for me, but I'll do it for the sake of the community. Where at OCIA, yeah. you're like, this isn't the best for the community, but it's the best for me. So I'm going to do this. <laughs> see, it's, it's, they don't, they don't, those, those new OCIA people, they don't know better. They, they don't know what they're missing. <laughs> they're, well, they don't know can't hurt them. The, yeah, you're you're living up to Pittsburgh's okayest priest after being pretty dang good for a while. You're like, nah, mm -hmm. gotta revert to the mean. <laughs> yep, exactly. Because uh, expectations get set too high, and I don't need that. That was uh, when I was in junior high uh, football. Uh, uh, I've you know mentioned the last few weeks that my son's playing junior high football for the first time, so it's mm -hmm. brought up a lot of memories of me playing. And I was the the fastest person on the team, and we'd always won run wind sprints at the end. And uh, yeah. I made the mistake of winning, you know, the first day of practice, winning every single wind sprint by you know ten ten yards or whatever. We would just uh, wow. the width of the field, so not the length, but we would sprint the width, sprint you know, touch the line on the other side and then come back. And I would win by 10, 15 yards, you know, and like yeah. there were people that like were barely halfway down the width when I was already turning around. So there was a lot of a lot of. Uh, me running and maybe the other two or three fast people. And then we got all the way to the other side and then we would get back. And it was this weird, like, get out of my way <laughs> as they're running this to, to the left and I'm running to the right. And um, I set expectations very high to where my coaches said that if you ever lose one race, you're going to have to do another one. I'm like, that's not fair. Like I, I have won 99% of the races. Therefore, if I don't win 1%, I am punished. That doesn't seem yeah, right. I don't like that. And then they started getting fat guys, like the linemen who didn't want to run. It was a blessing for them and a curse for me. They were like, your job, fat guy, is to make sure that Taylor doesn't get first. <laughs> if, if he gets first, you have to do push-ups. If he doesn't get first, Taylor has to do push-ups. So they kept putting fat people in my way, and mostly I would run around them and still kind of win. And every now and then it would, I'd get pissed off enough that I just <laughs> ran through him. Uh, whether I won or not, it was very fun. So uh, I, I agree with you on this not, not setting expectations high because then people uh, expect things of you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else is going on in the in the state of Sharapa, also known as Pennsylvania? <laughs> Ooh, um, uh, what else is going on? Uh, there's uh, once again random people in my house because we're removing some carpet in our stairwell. So, you know, random people in my house. Uh, what else? I don't know. That's kind of about it. It's been. It's been. Yeah, I don't know. That's it. <laughs> okay. that's, that's, sorry that was not a very good <laughs> transition or uh uh words uh all you had to hmm. say was i don't have much else going on it just took you a while <laughs> that's, yeah that's yeah it. i tried and then i was like but there's nothing else going on uh so i got this apple watch when i was the last time i was with you in, in pittsburgh staying staying in your house and yeah. uh the you know, I've been wearing it. It's been really nice. It's, I've, I've lost some weight while, I, while I've been wearing it. It's been really good for me, right? And I got it sure. when I was with you. You drove me over to the Apple Store. It was all a very, very nice time. Yeah. But uh, there was a new, like, iOS update. I don't know if it's called iOS. I think it's called, like, Apple Watch OS. But everybody knows what I mean, right? The new operating yeah. system. And they added this thing where, like, on one of the main pages... So it's like, you know, there's all these apps you can get, but like on like the one of the quick look pages, uh, it added this thing where it was like, here are some of what we think would be your favorite photos. And it puts like the top 10 like photos that they think you want to see from, you know, because it's all connected to your phone. Right. And it's like 
a picture of my daughter, a picture of my other daughter, a picture of the family, a picture of like me and my dad at the Astros game. It's like, it, like it's like all these big moments, and like my phone knows what's important to me because it knows everything about me, and yeah. uh, so it's all these lovely family moments. I think one picture at church. And then one of the 10 pictures that it shows me in this is the picture of the, the Bucky's mascot in, in my room at your house. <laughs> my, yeah. my phone thinks that's one of the 10 most important things in my life. And they're right. <laughs> <laughs> that's absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's very funny. So just so you know, even if my son doesn't think that you're one of his top two priests, my phone thinks that the prank you pulled on me is the, one of the top things that's happened to me this year. And it's not wrong. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Done with you. Now we're going to talk about okay. me. About time. So I, I'm going to be leading up to a spicy take. But before we get to a spicy take, I, I think there's been a, a few on the show, maybe once or twice a year, where we talk about how the, the church and people in the church just makes things way too freaking complicated when they could be simple, right? There are sure. some complicated things about our faith, and yet we take yeah. make the simple things complicated. Mm-hmm. But I, I wanted to, sh- to share a, a, a revelation that I had about uh, about uh, on this similar idea, but it has nothing to do with Catholics. Okay. And I think the school system also mm-hmm. does this to children. Mm. So first grade, my first grader can say that. Second grade, my second grader can say that. Third grade. They can say that fourth grade. They could, they could say all of the grades except yeah. for the one when they're learning how to say things. Mm-hmm. Kindergarten. Yes. <laughs> and then one year before that, when they're really learning how to piece words together, pre kindergarten three, <laughs> pre kindergarten four. And I'm like, why, why are we doing this to the children? And, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. We have pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we get back to nine, and we're like, let's try to trip them up. To this day, I looked this up the other day when I was making notes for the show. I don't know if yeah. freshman is spelled M-E-N or M-A-N. I'm not, I, I don't know. I have no idea. Sophomore? Is it sophomore or sophomore? I don't know. I'm not sure because every time I type it out in Google or like iMessage or whatever, it corrects it for me, but I don't know. And then we get to the end and we're like junior, senior. So there was some evil person, I don't know, 400 years ago. When did we come up with these grades? That was like, hey, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Freshman, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, kindergarten. It doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> See, this is, this is interesting. I have never heard of pre-kindergarten, nor have I ever heard about giving numbers in pre-kindergarten. Like, I've, I've never even heard that phrase. It's always been like, for me, like preschool, kindergarten. You've, ne- you've never about. heard, like, like, like preschool is yeah. what pre-K is. You've never heard of pre-K? No, I've never heard of Oh, pre-K. That's what they... Oh! Pre-kindergarten! We have I've to... heard pre-K. We have to but fix not it pre- because kids can't say it. No one's ever said it. <laughs> I've never heard anyone like say the whole thing out loud. I've never heard someone say pre You're The first time those words hit my ears was at this podcast. I've never heard anyone say pre-kindergarten. <laughs> Probably because it's too crazy of a yes, thing to say. So they just the say point. pre-K. <laughs> Yeah. Pre kindergarten. So pre K three is for the three year olds. Pre K four is for the four year olds. Yep. Gotcha. Preschool for three year olds, preschool for four year olds, right? And then kindergarten. And then first, second, third, fourth. I, I, I don't get it. I, like, it all makes sense except for four of them. Like, we got 80% right, and then we just made four of them incredibly complicated for no reason. Well, I mean, the kindergarten makes sense uh, in that it, it Germans wanting to make life difficult for children tracks for me, my, my <laughs> well, limited cultural yes. understanding. <laughs> you know, so that's the, the crazy word there. But yeah, freshman, freshman kind of makes sense. Sophomore, no one uses that word. What's, what's, that's, that's a ridiculous word to use. Freshman kind of makes sense. Like you're freshly <laughs> in college. Sure, fine. Yeah. Fresh meat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds kind of threatening. But yeah, that's uh, those are, I guess, things that uh, go through Taylor's brain. That's fascinating. That's the non-church one. Now I'm going to get to the church one. And this is one of those s- things that has snowballed in my life. We have okay. all had 
the experience of going to a mass where we can't understand the priest. We, we've all had that experience, right? Sure. And I think most mature Catholics can handle that, right? Especially if you're traveling yeah. and you go to somewhere and, you know, the priest is from uh, another country, from, uh, from Africa, from Asia, whatever. It, it, it can be hard to understand. We've all had the experience. And yet we're like, look, it's still the mass. I know what the mass is. Like, I, I can go to a mass in Spanish. I can go to a mass in Latin. I still kind of understand what's going on. But I'm not yeah. getting anything from the homily. I'm not getting anything from the readings. I'm not, you know, but it's like I can sit here and kind of essentially old school, pray along, say my own prayers at mass, but I'm not really engaged with what the priest or lector is saying. Right. Sure. It's been a snowball thing for a few years for me. Mm-hmm. And I find like it, it's one of those things where it's like maybe I could like jokingly complain. I'm not jokingly complaining anymore. This is a genuine complaint. And I understand that it's a, that it's a, you know, there's a priest shortage and we need these priests and what these priests are doing. Like I respect the priests from other countries being priests and coming here to serve and, and all that kind of stuff. Right. Sure. But you know, that's the macro level. That's I, I can't fix on my own on the micro level. I'm tired of going to masses with priests that I can't understand mm-hmm. to the point where I almost can't do it anymore. Like <laughs> it's getting real bad, dude. Mm-hmm. To where my premise that's going to start off this conversation is I think that if there is a priest and it is known that his com- congregation cannot understand his homilies, he should not do them. Mm. Either meaning just don't do a homily because I believe that's allowed anytime except maybe Sunday. You can help us answer that. I know you can skip it on daily mass. I think maybe you have to do it on Sunday. But either never, ever, ever do it or let the deacons do it. I, I, I like you. I get that these people, these men are holy, that they've given up their life to Christ, all that kind of stuff. It is not serving the congregation. It is not. Mm-hmm. And I know that's not the only point of mass. The point of mass is to pray and connect with God. But what I'm saying is we're not helping the congregations, i.e. me, pray when I can't understand, and it's like, I'm not talking borderline. If I, you know, if you just paid attention, you could understand it. No, I can't. I can't. I can't understand a word he's saying. And uh, sometimes these priests go on for 20 or 25 minutes. You're a great homilist. I don't want to hear you homilize for 20 to 25 minutes. I just don't. That's fair. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. But you know what would drive me nuts? If you <laughs> did a 20 to 25 minute homily in a Russian accent, I couldn't understand. I, I can't do it. I'm done with it. I can't do it. I need your help. I need you to solve the problem. I don't know what's going on. Get it in a garden. Okay. So uh, for daily mass, uh, for uh, masses that, yeah, for daily mass, you do not have to give a homily. So that's easy. For Sunday mass, there has to be a homily. It doesn't have to be a long homily, but there has to be a homily. What's so, the minimum yeah. length it can be? Uh, you know what? Probably like two words. Yeah, I I don't think you can communicate anything more. Like 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 the Jesus wept. The, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like with one. I mean, maybe you could do one word, but probably two. Like Jesus. love Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to do something. Real. Repent and go sit down. That'd yeah. be awesome. Okay, yeah. There we go. There we go. So one word is the minimum that you've communicated something by saying repent. So yeah. You know, it's one of the, like I have not had this experience very often. The only time that I have trouble understanding a homily is occasionally we have missionary priests. But even the guy who showed up uh, and he preached for me, a little bit harder to understand, but gave a good homily, not terribly long. Uh, he had to maybe, you know, focus a little bit, but he spoke fine. It, it would have been fine. But uh, yeah, uh, this is an interesting thing because I kind of agree with you in the sense that there's no point in speaking for 20 minutes when no one understands you. Right. Like there's, there's no point in that. Don't, don't do that thing. It was my understanding that like a lot of dioceses have their foreign priests, like go to like ac- accent reduction, like classes or something. Nope. Oh. Uh, it's, it's, it's this, I mean, I joke about clericalism a lot, but this is actually a, an example of that's real. That if that priest is getting any feedback, it's probably just people being very impolite about it. 
Uh, and so when you get like impolite or angry feedback, you're even less likely to take it in than ordinary critical feedback. And even that we don't take very well. But yeah, uh, like who's going to tell him and is he going to listen? And that's, I, I, I don't, I, I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you. I think it makes a lot of sense. Like if you can't be understood, then especially if you have like a deacon there who speaks English as like a first language, then yeah, have him preach. But um, I think that's just so not a part of a mindset or maybe even like the culture of priesthood that they've you know brought over that I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because we, we've I mean, we've been dealing with this for a while just in our community and like they, it's been discussed. Right. And I'm in a position where I can discuss it. Yeah. But, you know, nobody really wants to actually discuss it because then it gets awkward for, you know. Yeah, like if I had, let's just say it was you, right? And I'm having the conversation yeah. with you and, and I can't understand you. The people can't understand you. We have a good enough relationship, but I just come to you and I'm like, you know, look, nobody can understand you. I think it'd be better if, you know, the deacons did the homily or if, you know, you just did a, you know, one paragraph homily that you wrote out and, you know, whatever people could suggest, right? Right, but right, right. I, I like nobody wants to have that conversation because my assumption going in is that now you're going to hate me. It's going to be awkward every time I come to church and you're we're never going to be able to have a conversation again. And this is it's always going to be weird. And, you know, you're going to think ill of me. You're going to think that I don't care about you or the church or about the sacrifices that you make. Like, like that's all there. Right. Like we can we can both acknowledge that. And like, you know, maybe there's some of like me projecting of like, oh, this is how they're going to react. And it's like, or how they might react or whatever. But, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things that it's been going on for long enough that it's just like, I, like, I can't do this anymore, man. Like I was strong. Like it's been going on for years now. And for the yeah. first, just like with anything, I've talked about this around the COVID stuff. It's just like, I'm strong enough for three to six months to get through a tough time on my own, especially when it comes to mass and going to mass and things, you know, right. the, the church, the priests, the community, the staff making mass as best as it can be so that it helps sure. the community pray, that sort of thing, right? I'm strong enough to do it for three to six months. And then three to six months in, I'm zoning out and I'm, you know, playing with my kids during the homily or, you know, or, and then three months after that, I'm looking at my phone and reading my Bible. And then three months after that, I'm looking at my phone and looking at the NFL scores. You know, like that's that's just the I'm just being honest. Like that's the trajectory yeah. I've taken. And it just feels like a 50 50 shot. Every time I go to mass, I'm going to get a great mass experience with a great priest and a great homily. Or I'm going to get a mass where I'm zoned out for 30 minutes of it because I can't understand. And like I, I get that people can say you, you need to stop doing that. You're a bad person. You need to focus. And I'm just like. I, I'm only so strong. I, 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 and like, if I'm struggling with it, Jesus Christ, the people who just barely come to mass once a month, what do you think they're thinking? You know, like if it's a 50, 50 shot where I'm going to have a good experience or a negative one, it's tough. It's just tough. Yeah. It's, I mean, they're, they're, you're also pointing to like the, the, a wider problem in the church is that we're really, really bad at conflict. Yes. And then when we don't engage in conflict at all, because we're out of practice of it, a lot of times it can go poorly, but if we don't do it at all, then that stuff simmers and, and, you know, brews and it gets worse, you know? It's, it's, there is a duty for a priest to you know, take care of his congregation. There's also a duty for the bishop to make sure his congregations are taken care of. I might, I, I do not know what would be the best way to go about voicing a legitimate complaint, uh, whether it be, I, 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 my guess would be like talking to the pastor, having the pastor talk to the parochial vicar, which I assume is the situation. Sometimes like priest to priest or like the pastor having some kind of authority over the parochial vicar might help that move along. There's also like a, a certain sense in a lot of parishes where Mass is something we just get done, and if mass gets done, then it's good. I've noticed this even with, without like the language thing. It's like, oh, uh, we judge mass by how quickly it gets done, and if it happens, we have enough mass times. It's a, pretty rare in a parish where we're like, oh, let's actually focus on liturgy, and let's actually make this a priority. 
which is sad, but that's kind of my experience in a lot of parishes as well. Yeah, it's not good. It's not good, especially I'm thinking about the people who show up only once in a while or like every other week. You, know, you do have to take it. Be very. It's very easy to say the people who don't show up very often forget them. You know, they're not really Catholic, but that's not a Catholic mindset. Like we should do everything we can within reason to help those people out. Yeah. And if this sure. is like hampering it, then yeah. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah, it's tough, man. And you know, like I, I've had conversations with some people and it's just like you know the the often solutions of like just be better I, I, you know, i don't think i've tried or just the like you know there's a priest shortage why don't you you know are you willing to give up your son i'm like first of all i have one so it's going to be difficult no matter what you know like i like if yeah. he wants to be a priest great like i'll come around to it but it would be a difficult thing like I, i'm just acknowledging that right sure also yeah. he's 11 if he became a priest it wouldn't be for 20 years you know, 17 years whatever Mm-hmm. Like, that's not solving my problem this weekend. Like, leave me alone. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't and know, usually man. those a lot of times those statements are not the person isn't trying to be helpful. They're trying to be superior. You know, um, and a lot of times those statements come from people who aren't dealing with the situation themselves. They're looking at them from the outside. So, that's about them, not about you. It's tough, man, but. So, something's got to give at some point like either mm. either things need to change or people are going to stop coming and people are going to stop yeah. growing in spiritually and like it's it's just it's just tough so i'm glad you agree with me somewhat that's that's nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, speaking of things not understanding where this all came from <laughs> Yeah, was one of these days when I was sitting in mass and I couldn't understand anything. I realized the irony. I tweeted about this and some people thought it was hilarious and some people thought I was a terrible person. They got blocked. Uh, yeah. So I just thought it was a very funny. It sounds, uh, like sounds like a regular tailored tweet right yeah. there. That's uh, pretty par for the course. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hey, I lost eight followers on this one. Gained three, though. <laughs> so it was a reading about a month ago or so. And it was Jesus when he was healing the person who had a speech impediment. And in order to heal the person who had a speech impediment, he said, F fa which is just genuinely hilarious. Like he spoke with a speech impediment to heal a man with a speech impediment. So very funny. So I'm hoping that all these words that I don't understand are healing my soul uh, <laughs> while I'm sitting there fuming. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it got me thinking of other words that Jesus could have said to people who, you know, like he heals a deaf person. He could have just been like, Hanukkah! <laughs> they wouldn't have heard, you know? <laughs> I don't know. He just throws his power into them and then they're healed. Uh, you know, Eureka! I just kept thinking of like exclamatory words that Jesus could have said while he was, uh, you know, like Eureka would be a good one for whatever he's, uh, I picture that one being when he's alone in the cave after he uh, re- returns from the dead. Eureka! I live. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so anyway, that's that. Yeah. That's what I think about during these masses that I don't understand what's happening. Yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is is looking up football scores during a homily a good thing? Uh, no. Am I going to pretend like I know the experience of having to go to mass and not understand everything for like six months? I, I no. So <laughs> I, you only attend mass with a ba- with a bad person as a priest half the time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh's okayest priest. All right. Mm-hmm. What we're going to do is we're going to take a little break and then we're going to come back and we're going to try out a new game that I think will go incredibly well, which of course means it's going to flop. So don't go anywhere. Yeah. We'll be right back. <laughs> We have a brand new teaching series launching right now on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Forte Catholic. Go over there, hit the subscribe button, and you can check out our new apologetic series. This is an eight-week study that I am leading for our parish, and we are recording it for you to enjoy as well. Week one is already up on the channel. There's an introduction to apologetics, best practices for sharing the faith, and some of the pitfalls when we get into apologetics. This week, I will be recording the the proofs of God's existence, and that will be up later this week in our YouTube feed. Head on over there, hit subscribe, watch the video, share it with somebody who uh, maybe is Catholic and has some doubts and struggling with some some of the church's teachings. Uh, we'll also be tackling uh, some of the like most common like Protestant 
um, arguments about Catholicism amongst many more things, the problem of evil and stuff, stuff like that coming over the next few weeks. So uh, go check those out. Not only do we have that brand new series, we also have our entire Catholic Foundation series that's been posted up there for a while now. That's an introduction or reintroduction to the basic teachings of Catholicism. So kind of in that similar vein, as well as full length episodes of this podcast that you are currently enjoying. So go check out all the great stuff that we have on our YouTube channel. Leave a subscribe, leave a, leave a thumbs up, hit the bell, all the things and enjoy the rest of today's show with Padre Anthony. Welcome back to Forte Catholic. I'm Taylor Stroll, and that's still Father Anthony Sharapa. I don't think we said your name at all in the last segment. <laughs> just priest. <laughs> <laughs> just priest and Sharapa. So we almost got there. We almost got there. Yeah. But, uh, I have had this idea for a while. Uh, it's one of those things that like, I typically try to save stuff like this to try out on you first, because you're typically down with anything. And mm -hmm. it's been about a month that this idea has been sitting in my brain. And here you are a month later after we recorded our last episode where uh, I am thrilled to play this game. And I think you and I are going to have a lot of fun, but we shall see. So we're going to call this some it's maybe we won't lock in the name today, but for today, we're calling it biblical narration, biblical okay. narration. So we are going to take turns narrating a Bible story. So I'm going to go first. I'm going to narrate a famous Bible story and I'm going to take pauses. And in those pauses, you have to pick up the story from memory. So these are stories mm -hmm. that, you know, most people will know that could, like you could probably tell this story in your own words, but do yeah. you know all of the details? Do you know exactly what the quotes were? Most likely not. And this is all kind of coming from the idea of like, uh, I, I've been working on this apologetics course, and I, so I've, I've, you know, not something that I typically do, but I'm doing this apologetics course for our parish this fall. So I have been thinking more about like conversations with people of uh, who believe differently, whether it's Protestants or uh, other religions or no religion or whatever, right? And often a Protestant claim against Catholics is that we don't know the Bible at all because they have a lot of Bible verses and a lot of Bible stories and quotes memorized, whereas Catholics were steeped in it, were steeped in Scripture, but we might not know chapter and verse. We might not know the exact quotes, but we like kind of get the gist of it. So we're going to see yeah. if we can prove or disprove that theory today. So I am going to be the narrator first, and whenever I pause, you're going to pick up the story. Uh, it might be long quotes. It might be one word. Uh, I'll kind of yeah. help you along, but we'll see how this goes. So, see, the temptation is like, do I want to try to be as accurate as possible or as ridiculous as possible? I'm, I'm of two minds of how to take this game, but we'll, I, we'll see what happens. I don't know either. I have my preference, but I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> We're going to see how it goes, and if I need to do some coaching after the episode, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay. So, um, we're going to do a story that everyone's heard before, but I think you'll probably. My assumption is you'll get tripped up a couple of times. A champion named Goliath of Gath came out of the Philistine camp. He was six cubits and a span tall. He had a helmet made of bronze. Good. On his, on his head and wore a breastplate made of more bronze uh, and a scale armor weighing uh, 1,000 uh, tons. <laughs> That exactly equals 5,000 shekels. <laughs> Very good. Uh, he wore greaves made out of? Uh, just bronze. He was and decked. In a bronze. scimitar made of? Uh, that one was made of adamantium. Uh, that one was also bronze. <laughs> slung from oh, his thanks. shoulders. The shaft of his javelin was like a weaver's beam, and its iron head weighed 600 shekels, which translates mm -hmm. to how many tons? Uh, the 600 shekels will be uh, 1,200. Oh, very, very good. Uh, I think he yeah. went the opposite direction of earlier, but fantastic. Uh, yeah. his, shield, his shield bearer went ahead of him. He stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel. So this is what Goliath shouted to the ranks of Israel. Yeah. Hey, you losers <laughs> over there. I see all you tiny Jewish people. I bet Goliath could squish any one of your warriors. So pick one out so we don't have to fight armies and he'll squish your head. I didn't see you saying the word tiny Jewish people coming out today, but here we hey, are. Hey, listen, Goliath was not a nice man. He was not a fan of the Jewish people. I am. I love him. My favorite person in the whole world, uh, Jewish, turns out. So, yeah. But I Goliath, saw, not so much. I saw a joke yesterday, and it said, um, it was, it was a, a tweet from a Jewish person who said, yes. uh, a, a Christian asked me what time, what time I go to church, and I had to correct them and be like, 
guys, we don't call it church. We call it the deli. <laughs> Very funny. It's a joke I cannot make. There. <laughs> I can appreciate can't make it. Okay. So he said, well, uh, pretty close to what you said. Why come out in battle formation? I am a Philistine and you are Saul's servants. Choose one of your men and have him come down to me. If he beats me in combat and kills me, we will be your vassals. And if I beat him and kill him, you shall be our vassals and serve us. And the Philistine continued. Uh, so, yeah, get, get moving. Go find, find a person. <laughs> Yep. Let's get this. Let's get it on. <laughs> very, Let's very close. This. Good, good enough, right? And then we're gonna we're gonna fast forward a little bit because it talks about it introduces David. It talks about all of his backstory about killing other animals and stuff. But we're gonna skip to the part wherever he uh, he meets him, and, and it says, uh, uh, "Here we go." The Israelites had been saying, did, did you see this man coming up? He comes to insult Israel. The king will make whoever kills him a very wealthy man. He will give you." 500 shekels of bronze. Uh, also known as his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and declare his father's family. Uh, to be some righteous dudes. Except from paying taxes. <laughs> <laughs> David now said to the men standing next to him. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. How, how will this man who kills the Philistine and frees Israel from disgrace be rewarded? Uh, dumb question, David. I think this might have been. You. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think this might be the editor of the Old Testament's problem. But he, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "Hey, here's what you'll get if you win." David's like, "Yeah, but what do I get if I win?" <laughs> he was young. He wasn't paying attention. The guy had a, a, a thick accent, so he didn't understand him. Yeah, exactly. And then he gets mad at the Israelites, uh, and David says about the whole situation. He's mad at the Israelites uh, and regarding right. to Goliath. So David famously says this phrase. Uh, God's on my side. And by the way, I used to kill bears, so I, I've got this. Not even close. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should <laughs> insult the armies of the living God? You don't remember that one? That's one of my favorite you lines know, in the Bible. It's a great line. <laughs> <laughs> insult the man's junk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's how we. Uh, that's how we do things. And then, uh, so in response to this, the Israelites repeated to David. Uh. He's real big. All right, why well, uh, we we can't send anyone because he's 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 so big. No, they he's said if you kill him, trickles. you'll be rewarded. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they they really want to make it very clear that if David like we, kills him, we'll give you stuff. <laughs> he'll get a wife and not have to pay taxes. <laughs> yeah, here's here, what else does a man want in life? <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. A wife and not having to pay taxes. Uh, that's uh, no comment. Never mind. I'm not going to go where where I was gonna, about to go. So. Um, then we're going to skip over the part where David talks to Saul about fighting and Saul, you know, gives him his armor. And then David's like, I don't, I don't need all this armor. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I, can't, I can't move in this. This is too heavy. Way so, too many shekels. Uh, he, he took, he took all that stuff off. Okay. So now we get to the fight with the shield bearer marching before him. The Philistine advanced closer and closer to David when he, when he sized David up and saw that he was youthful, ruddy and handsome in appearance. He began to deride him. He said to David, uh, who is this like dog that you send after me to to fight? Something like that. He called him a dog, I think. Yes, he calls him a dog. Like, almost exactly. Yeah. That's the best. That's yeah, the best yeah, that you've done. Yeah. Am I a dog that you come against me with a staff? Then the Philistine oh, cursed okay. David by his gods and said to him, "Uh, your your god is stupid, and I'm gonna squish you with this scimitar." Come here to me, and I will feed your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. So David answered him. Oh, he says like the, this is where the, the, you were all. We were very close with scimitar. He does. He does say yeah. the word scimitar. Oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna strike you down and cut off your own head with your own sword. And also, you're dumb, and my God's awesome. And also scimitar. <laughs> and also scimitar. <laughs> your uh, your sword scimitar. You come your against me with sword. sword and spear and scimitar. Great use of alliteration in the heat of battle. Uh, but I come mm -hmm. against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have insulted. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He wait, wait, is wait, a wait, friend wait. of mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, today the Lord shall deliver you into my hand. I will strike you down and cut off your head. This very day I will feed your dead body and the dead body of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Thus the whole land shall learn that Israel has a God. All this multitude too shall learn that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord says, for the battle belongs to the Lord and whoever shall deliver you into our hands. I, I think that I was told as a child that I had to stop trash talking on the basketball court when I became a good Christian boy. This proves yeah. that is such BS. He talks so much crap to, the, to this Philistine. Oh yeah, you can say <laughs> you can say whatever you want to the Philistines. It's never racism. It's totally fine. Uh, also, let's take a, let's take a, just a moment to acknowledge just how cool is is David in this whole scene. Yeah, he's just so ba. He's what awesome. A boss. What a boss. Okay, yeah. that is where our story concludes. I will give you a uh, an A plus on entertainment. And a uh, B minus on biblical uh, readership. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I think the B minus is actually pretty generous. I'll take that. <laughs> All right. A, let's a curve see. on a grade. Let's, yeah. Let's see if uh, if you were paying attention uh, last week. <clears throat> I was not. Reading- I mentioned that in the last segment. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of why I picked this. Okay. Uh, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, uh, I don't like you very much. <laughs> son, <laughs> son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, uh, No, I want a goat. That's pretty good. I will not. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> There's no goats, but okay. I think I was that. That's from the prodigal son story. The old the, yeah. The, uh, you, 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 sons. you like my younger son. I want a goat. <laughs> yeah, different son story, but I like where your mind's at. Okay, uh, he said in reply, "I will not." But afterwards, changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, "Absolutely, Padre." Yes, he says yes, sir. <laughs> but he didn't go do he it. Said, he didn't go. He did not go. <laughs> what a punk. Wit. <laughs> uh, which of the two did his father's will? They answered, uh, "The father's a bad father because he raised two shit sons." <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what they thought. That's in my notes here. But the actual says uh, the first. Mm. Jesus a- said to them, "Amen, I say to you, oh, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are." Fun. What are they doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. Whoopsie, whoopsie doodle. Jesus did not say that. Says, oh, uh, tax collectors. I, I didn't realize that was a Jesus quote. I feel terrible. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. I'll, I'll go back a little bit. Jesus uh, said to them, oh, Amen. I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. That's fun. When going to heaven is so much fun. It is fun. It's, it's, I was it's a right. great time. Okay. <laughs> when John. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. We'll go with that. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even oh, yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your mind and believe him. Let's see. Is that the end of that gospel? Yeah, it's the end of that gospel. So, Praise uh, to you, Lord Jesus uh, Christ. Christ, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the congregation's in horror at their at this <laughs> reading of the gospel. <laughs> Let's see. Entertainment. That was good. That was good. That was A. Uh, especially the uh, that's fun part. That, really, that got me. That, that, I'm going to get in <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you are. Forgive me, Father, if I have sinned. <laughs> it's been three yeah. minutes since my last sin. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to hell, but it was entertaining for me to watch it happen yeah, in real yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I'll give you like a, a, a C plus on accuracy. You were in the right zone for some of the stuff, but. Mm. Yeah, if I if I would have uh, understood the, the, the gospel reading this weekend, I would have. Yes. Probably done better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to put blame elsewhere. That's totally <laughs> like, a, like a good Catholic trying to grow in holiness. Okay. I have, I have one more for you. It's less of a story and more of a matching. Uh, we'll, we'll see how you do. Okay. This comes from my daughter the other day. They do projects at school where they like make crafts in whatever Bible story or lesson that they're going through. 
So uh, she made a bee. And and what do you what do you what story do you think that this bee? Um, what story do you think that it's had on on the paper that made its wings? Okay, so she made a bee. She made a bee. It was like Bible a Bible story. It was like a like a toilet paper roll, like you know, like the oh, the nice, just nice. just the cardboard part, and then mm-hmm. she colored that yellow, and then they put like a paper on one side, they put eyes, and they made the wings, and on the wings was printed a B Bible story. Okay, uh, was it talking about John the Baptist who ate honey in the wild? No, those are locusts, no. uh, not bees. But very close. Oh, but he also he, he ate honey and locusts. Did he eat honey? Yeah, I feel honey. like John ate honey. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um. Uh. What was? Oh, was it uh, about uh, God's promise to Israel, a land flowing with milk and honey? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna need you to stop thinking like a priest for a moment. And start thinking like a okay. first grader. What What would okay. you assign a first grader that for a B? <laughs> yes. Y- you've seen this somewhere. I know you have. It's real dumb. Uh. Oh. Um. If I just I mean, start the sentence, the B, <laughs> the Beatitudes, Beatitudes, oh, the Beatitudes. I hate that. So without That's, giving you yeah. think mm-hmm. time to speak, we're gonna do this one rapid fire. Okay. Blessed are oh. the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the earth. No, blessed <laughs> are those who mourn; they shall be comforted. Yes, blessed are the meek. Uh, they shall inherit the earth. Correct. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be satisfied. Uh, close enough. That might be a translation issue. Filled is what I have, but I'll give it to you. Blessed are okay. the merciful. They will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart. Um, they shall see God. Blessed are the cheesemakers. They shall never be lactose intolerant. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers. <laughs> <laughs> they shall be called. Wait, do you see? They shall be called. They should be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Um, uh, their reward will be great in heaven. Uh, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Very good. Uh, Blessed okay. are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, those who they persecute or they prosecuted the prophets before you. Okay, only one you got wrong. We'll see if you can get it now that you you just mixed and matched one of them. Blessed yeah, are the poor yeah, yeah. in spirit. Uh oh, no, no I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the same answer. Star Blessed Wars is like poetry; it rhymes. So if you got Blessed, blessed are spirit. those who are who are persecuted because of righteousness. Uh, uh, this they shall receive uh, uh, five hundred shekels for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I'm trying to help you out here. You got number. You got number eight, which was blessed yeah. are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. And you said for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Star Wars is like poetry. It rhymes. I'm going to go back to the first beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit. They shall uh, inherit the kingdom of Shmevin. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's the same answer as the last one, which I never noticed oh. until we did this program. Okay. You only got one wrong. Uh, can I tell you how many I would have gotten right? Please. One, because I played this the other day with the B in my hand as my daughter showed me, and I'm like, <laughs> I got one correct. <laughs> mm. I I got, uh, I, I could have made a great matching game. I got all eight and all eight. I just matched them up with seven incorrectly. <laughs> I got you. So like, blessed are the blah, blah, blah. That was on one wing. And then the consequence of that was on the other wing. Correct. Delightful. Correct. Yeah. Delightful. Very good. So you, I, I thought you were going to do... W- way worse on that because i did way worse but you're yeah. a better catholic than me so yeah i was surprised let's do let's do one more i i gave you two you gave me one let's let's do one moss all right we're gonna prepare you for uh next week this is this is preparation for next week's uh, gospel uh, okay jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people hear another parable there was a landowner who planted a vineyard put a hedge around it dug a white wine press in it and built a barn storage facility tower, <laughs> uh, tower. that's a you could have done worse then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey when the vintage time drew near what did he do mm, he put someone in charge of the tower uh no he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain the produce 
but the tenant sees the servants, and one they... Uh, one they uh, beat up, one they yeah. uh, killed, and one yeah. they... Uh, I don't think I can say that word that I'm thinking. One they one they killed in a specific way. What's 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 everyone's favorite way to kill someone in the Gospels? Oh boy, that's a dangerous question. <laughs> what, what's your favorite way to kill people, Taylor? <laughs> uh, 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 I've been watching too much Game of Thrones. That's beheading. I don't think it's beheading. <laughs> Stoned. The third stoned, day stoned. Stoned. Yes, I love getting. Yeah, stoned. they love. They love. <laughs> they, they, people are always getting threatened with being stoned. Big uh, fan incidents. of getting stoned. Yep. Mm-hmm. Again, he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones. They treated them the same way. Finally, he went. He finally he sent them his son, thinking Th- they would like him and not <laughs> kill him and stone him. Correct. They will respect my son. Yep. But when the when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, "Get your rocks ready." <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting for this one. I saved my favorite rock for the son. Um, I don't know why that's um, <laughs> um, they say something crazy. This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. Which I, which at first glance is the craziest reasoning ever. I killed your if son. Give me his money. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how ransom works. Hey, I killed your son. I'll send him back to you if you give me all your money. Wait a second. We did this. Wait wrong. a second. So actually, w- w- this is just a quick fun fact. Uh, I I looked this up because I was like, well, this makes no sense. Apparently, if someone leases you their vineyard, and you don't show up for a long time, uh, they get the vineyard. So. If they kill the son and no one else shows if up. If someone they- leased me their vineyard. Yes. And they didn't show up. It's now my vineyard? Yeah. Uh, There's like some sort of like rule. I mean, not now, but like apparently in Bible times. Anyway. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. So what did they do to him, Taylor? They uh, stoned him. Was, uh, they seized him threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him. They'll kill him. Kill him. Kill them all. Yes, correct. He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants, who will give them the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, uh, no I, I wasn't listening. Say it again. I was I was thinking about how the other day my son came home with a question from theology class. And he said, Dad, you know stuff, right? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, how, uh, how can God t- say in one sentence, thou shalt not kill when he kills thousands of people in every story? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, buddy. <laughs> different rules for God. Yeah. yeah, it's just different rules. <laughs> okay, try That's again. That's a great question. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, so... Uh, He's talking to these Pharisees. The Pharisees say they will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give them the produce at the proper times. Ooh, correct. Jesus. You don't know how yeah. correct you are, Pharisees, because this story is mm-hmm. about you. And I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm putting you out and I'm bringing the uncircumcised in. <laughs> Goliath's <laughs> people can be my people now. Take that. <laughs> I mean, that's the spirit of, yeah, that's the gist of it. Uh, the, the more specifics are, did you ever read in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord, this has been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. There you go. God, big fan of fruit, that Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. pretty good. I think that's what's swimming. You better in that one. I'm yeah. a I'm a big uh, see the thing was it took me a while yeah. to realize what parable we were in at first yeah. I thought it was the parable of the talents where the where the the vineyard guy leaves and and then he gives you know five talents three talents one talent whatever and then I thought we were doing the other barn one which is like hey if you build a barn and it gets full what should you do build a second barn no give stuff away I thought we were doing that one it took me a while to you realize what parable that we were might in. be my fault because you told me what story I was doing. 
at uh, the beginning of uh, the King David thing. I didn't tell you what pair of eyes jumped into it. So I, I, di- I didn't. Maybe that I just used rule. names. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Uh, I, I, okay. I, I, I just knew you'd pick it up because the first line was like, Goliath of Gath. It's like, I got it. I know where we're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, 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 that's true. That was delightful. I'd play that game again. That was very fun. I, I actually have another one, but we're going to save it for next time. That's called mm-hmm. A Little Radio Tease. And I think what we're going to do is... Call it there. We have another segment, but I think we're just going to be done because that, we're, we're at our time. I think we did a good job, and that was a great place to end. And now I have content for the next person. <laughs> it's very good for a podcaster to assure himself that he did a good job uh, on air. <laughs> I, I did great. You did okay. I'll do great again with someone else next week. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably do a better job than me. That's, yeah, that's fair. Unless it's your son, in which case, no, you'll do a terrible oh, he, job. He, I, dude, he has podcasting in his future, that poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's was, his inheritance. He was great. I was honestly like, he might be a good a good co-host. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, this could work. Good content. <laughs> I could just make him record. Yeah, exactly. I, I own him. You don't have he to hunt to him do down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have a... I, I run his schedule. I know when he's at home. It's really, really actually pretty easy. So, yeah. Well, uh, we were going to talk about the apologetics stuff. Just know that I'm running this apologetics course at my parish. Uh, over, over the next eight weeks, we'll be posting the videos of them every week on the Forte Catholic YouTube channel. I'm looking forward to it. It's something different for me. Uh, it's, it's, it's just kind of a different topic. I'll go into a little bit more uh, here, here over the next few weeks. But uh, go subscribe to the Forte Catholic YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Forte Catholic. And uh, you'll see all those videos. By the time this airs, I will have done the first one because it's tonight as we record. And... It'll be there in your YouTube feed. Oh, and check out Clearly Speaking. We started again. I'm, I don't know how long it'll last. I'm, I'm but, terrified. Yeah. I, I like, like genuinely am worried that Father Harrison's going to die. Because the last time y'all tried this and you tempted the Lord, he tried to kill Father Harrison. And then y'all are like, we, we're doing it anyway. <laughs> yes. And we, <laughs> we said, if, if God tries to kill one of us one more time, we're done. We're done. That's it. We'll give it, we'll give it one more shot. <laughs> it's it's very funny because t- typically when y'all took short breaks like a week off or like three weeks off or whatever sure every time sure. that N- nick your brother would tweet out from the cleric speaker thing we're back all the replies were we're so happy we're so excited we missed you guys y'all are the best forte catholic sucks like that was just all the comments <laughs> in, in, in the replies but uh, like today Nick yeah. posted, check your check your feed, and half the replies are, yay, we're so excited. This is the best. And the other half were like, oh, no, someone please check on Father Harrison. We're very worried. <laughs> we're, we're, we, the prudence is a thing that y'all should learn about. Maybe you shouldn't be doing this. It's just very funny. It's like, I don't know. People, people still love you guys, but enough where we're like starting to boycott the show for your health. <laughs> Yeah, stop stop tempting the Lord. What are you doing? Exactly. exactly. We, we talked a lot about God smiting people down today and, and harsh ways mm-hmm. for people to die. Uh, mm-hmm. So just tread lightly, my friend. Uh, check both ways yes. before you cross the street. <laughs> Fair enough. That's good advice. All right. I'll be back next week. I'll be back in a month. See ya. Thank you so much for watching, listening today. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit subscribe wherever you're watching or listening. If you haven't yet, leave a review if you're listening on podcasts. Leave a comment if you're listening on YouTube to let us know that you're there and what you thought of today's show. We'll be back next week. Love you.